Hey everyone, Nike here. If you follow my channel, you might have noticed that I recently switched to an AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT, which is a step below their flagship, the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX. And AMD have been kind enough to provide a review unit to test out. So how much better is it over its sibling? Watch on to find out. This is the AMD Radeon RX 7900XTX, AMD's current flagship GPU and this model is AMD's reference card which is made by AMD themselves. Open up the box and we can see the GPU prop up slowly, a nice little box designed to elevate the unboxing experience. The GPU comes with 390mm fans and oh my, the card is really heavy. Does it have such a dense heatsink? We have the Radeon logo over here and these little white strips, these light up and the heat sink might be constituting to the weight. It has a strip of red on the fins and uh, we have two 8 pin PCI Express power connectors. This card needs a minimum 800 watt power supply which is recommended and ports wise we have display port which is DisplayPort 2.1 and supports up to 54 Gbps which allows for up to 8K displays at 165 Hz or to 8K displays at 60 Hz. AMD has also opted to include an USB Type-C port on the rear I.O. panel along with the usual HDMI and DisplayPort connections. This may be useful especially as USB Type-C becomes more common as a video connection. The card comes with 24 GB of GDDR6 video memory a lot of VRAM, which makes the card future ready when games increase in complexity. AMD has also updated its media engines to include support for AV1 encoding and decoding, which support simultaneous 8K 60Hz encodes or decodes at a time. This card measures 4.7 by 11.3 by 2.1 inches, uh, which makes it relatively large yet also significantly smaller than my Sapphire Pulse A7900 XT. The 7900 XTX is supposed to provide the best bang for your buck and the specs would indicate that it should. The most interesting aspect of the new RDNA 3 GPU is the use of chiplet technology. Rather than going with a massive monolithic die, RDNA 3 uses a combination of smaller dies in a similar strategy to that of the AMD's latest CPUs. This means you get top-end GPU configurations and AMD no longer needs to make a single 520mm square die like RDNA 2. AMD did move to a dual shader design with, within each CU, effectively doubling the shader count in each compute unit. The 7900 XTX comes with 6144 cores, a boost clock of 2.5 GHz, 96 MB of infinity cache with a bandwidth of 3.5 Gbps. The memory is GDDR6 with 384-bit wide bus with a bandwidth of 960 Gbps. On the flagship 7900XTX, we get one GCD plus six MCDs, the GCD or graphics compute die, built on TSMC's N5 node and MCD or memory cache die, or built on TSMC N6. Radeon Super Resolution is an in-driver upscaling feature that uses the same algorithm found in AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution. Basically, you reduce the resolution of the game and RSR upscales the image to your native resolution. AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution uses cutting-edge open upscaling and frame generation technologies to help boost your frame rates in supported games and deliver amazing high-quality, high-performance gaming on virtually any hardware. AMD Smart Access Memory allows AMD Ryzen processors to harness the full potential of the graphics memory by giving the CPU access to all of the VRAM. Make sure above 4G deep coding and resize bar support are enabled in your BIOS to use Smart Access Memory. I am testing this GPU on my system which has a Ryzen 7 5800X with 64GB of DDR4, 3200MB transfers per second RAM, the Gigabyte Aorus X570 motherboard and powering the system is the XPG Core Reactor 850W power supply. Now for the benchmarks. Cyberpunk 2077, I ran the benchmark first in 4K and we get an average of 113 FPS. This was without ray tracing. At 1440p, we get 128.35 FPS and 133 FPS in 1080p. With ray tracing and FSR 2.1 enabled, we get 74 FPS in 4K, 94.37 FPS in 1400p, 101 FPS in 1080p. Next, we have Ghostwire Tokyo. This is my first time playing Ghostwire Tokyo. We get an average of 85 to 90 FPS in 4K, close to 170, 180 FPS in 1440p, and around 200 FPS in 1080p. 
High on life is another new game I'm trying out and at 4K we get 60 to 70 FPS which is smooth. At 1440p we still get around the same FPS which will depend on where we are in the game too. 1080p it stays mostly above 70 FPS, mostly hitting 80 FPS. Some locations it hit 100 FPS too. Starfield. Starfield plays well too and we get around 70 FPS in 4K. Again, this is location specific. New Atlantis will drop down to around 40 to 50 FPS. 1440p is a little more FPS, getting close to 80 FPS indoors and 1080p hovers a little close to 100 FPS. Atomic Heart ran at a smooth 70 to 80 FPS in 4K outdoors at times, peaking at 110-115 FPS during an indoor battle. At 1440p outdoors, we get a healthy 115-130 FPS. At 1080p, we get 130 FPS plus, hitting 180 to 200 FPS at times. Lies of P ran at 100 to 140 FPS in 4K with FSR off. Turning on FSR 2 quality preset boosted the frame rate up to 180 FPS. In balanced, the frame rate crossed 200 FPS all the way up to 240 FPS. Performance mode, the frame rate stayed around 230 to 250 FPS. Red Dead Redemption 2 at 4K ran at a max frame rate of 133 FPS, 191 FPS at 1440p and 195 FPS at 1080p. Here are 3D Mark benchmarks, Time Spike scored 23,113 and Time Spy Extreme scored 11,395. Port Royal, which is a ray tracing benchmark, scored 15,633. Fire Strike scored 45,387 and Fire Strike Ultra scored 18,901. A new one this time is Speedway, which scored 5,966. VR also works well. I have the HTC Vive and I had no problems at all. Power consumption, we can see the total system power draw close to 650 watts. That's why your 800 watt PSU is recommended. The GPU ran at 68 degrees max and this was during the benchmarks. It runs cool and doesn't throttle at all. Generative AI, I'm using stable diffusion installed locally on my system. This version uses AMD GPUs to generate imagery and it works quite well. Quite clean and sharp images. I picked up the RX 7900 XT recently and it's been great. All my games run at 4K without a hitch and without FSR turned on. The RX 7900 XT X takes it a notch higher. Not very high, but higher nonetheless. So is the 7900 XT X any good? I feel it is value for money considering the performance we get at the price point. Nvidia cards are also getting cheaper and Intel Though not competent now, another competitor in the GPU market would bring about better pricing, which would be a win for us consumers. FSR allows to gain more FPS in games that don't optimally run, which has not been the case as all the games I ran, well, they all ran well at 4K. But some have been shy of the 100 FPS mark, which FSR takes care of. And with FSR 3 released, we get even more performance and quality. AMD also have been optimizing their drivers and the problems that multiple YouTubers were facing earlier seems to have all been ironed out. I am running the driver version 23.11.1 which is the latest as on when I am running the benchmark tests. AMD is quite competitive and we cannot compare it to the competition on performance alone. And each one outperforms the other in certain tests. What you the consumer need to take into account is what you need the card for, which also depends on the games that you would play. If you need rasterized performance, especially for esports gaming, the 7900 XTX is a great choice. But if you need ray tracing, which is used in a limited number of games, go with Nvidia. But if you want a GPU for 4K gaming, the 7900 XT, let alone the XTX, will be enough. If you have been waiting for a powerful graphics card that can compete with the Nvidia GeForce RTX 4080 at a more attractive price, this is the card for you. So what do you guys think? Would you pick one up? Make sure to comment below. Also make sure to like, subscribe and also hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are added. Thank you for watching and see you all next time.